Um, so we have, uh, for the next five hours, um, a great program for you. Um, you read the abstract when you signed up. We're going to keep this technical as much as possible. Um, it's very light on the marketing. We have a lot to talk about. Um, and as you know, the challenges in your industry, in the area of low power, um, are something that, that we can help you with. And we have a number of uh, experts who are going to come and share uh, their approach to solving low power challenges and provide, uh, hopefully, some interesting takeaways for you. Um, we're going to have some time for questions and answers throughout the day uh, after each of these sessions. Um, I'll introduce um, our speakers uh, before each session, but just a quick uh, overview of our speakers today. Uh, first of all, we have our special guest, uh, Sriram from Qualcomm, who's going to talk about industry advancements to close the power management verification gap. We're going to follow that with mentors Rick Coster, who's going to talk about low power considerations for verification. We'll have a break for lunch, and then Kazi will be talking about a metrics-driven low-power methodology for your RTLIP. Shantanu will be looking at an emulation-based approach for low-power verification and analysis. And then finally, I'll come back and uh, talk some more about uh, debug solutions for low-power. So just a reminder, uh, we do have a prize draw for an Amazon gift card. Uh, we'll do that at the end of the day, uh, and you must be in the room to win that. Uh, we have passed out survey cards. Uh, they should be available on your tables, and there's some available at the front. Please uh, take the time to fill these out. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback on this session. And these also form uh, your prize draw entry. So towards the end of the day, uh, we'll collect those in, uh, and we'll, we'll have a drawing at 3 o'clock. Okay, with that, we'll get started with a quick um, introduction to the topic for me before I hand over to, to Sri Ram. So we're all here uh, to talk about low power. Uh, low power affects all of our projects in one way or another, and it affects uh, all of our customers, um, either through concerns for minimizing the power consumption of our devices uh, to protect the environment, um, or simply to provide users with a great experience for their mobile devices so that they have the capabilities they, they look for and the, the time that their device will last for. Computers um, over the decades have shrunk considerably and increased in complexity considerably. We can see that every generation of computer technology, there's a shift uh, in the technology in the physical size, in the power requirements. Um, and we expect this to continue. We can't imagine what's ahead of us in 20 or 30 years' time. But history tells us that this uh, continues. And low power is a key part uh, of this progression. Every generation of compute um, has typically a new approach to power consumption or a new requirement for power consumption. And what we're approaching is the compute capabilities of the human brain, which is an exceptionally efficient um, computer uh, in terms of power. Half of the human brain is devoted directly or indirectly to vision. It's always on, uh, like many of the devices that we're designing for. Uh, and always on means always consuming power. So our architectures of the future need to emulate the capabilities of the brain if we're going to achieve the power dissipation and power consumption requirements of tomorrow's compute architectures. Uh, looking at different compute architectures to solve different classes of problems is one way uh, to optimize. Uh, for example, neuromorphic chips can use relatively uh, little electricity to solve particular pattern-based uh, problems, whereas traditional architectures uh, require substantial amounts of, of power, but perhaps they are required for particular numerical problems. So choosing the right architecture for the right problem is part of the, uh, the challenge. If we look at the, 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 the data coming out of the IBM True North um, uh, project, for example, we can see that the requirements for 
approaching the complexity of a brain-like pattern recognition um, are uh, uh, cumulative um, uh, increases in complexity and in uh, memory usage, but also uh, in low power. Uh, we have a compound growth rate of minus 172% year on year in the power requirements. And we're approaching the theoretical 20 watts capability of the human brain, but we're not there yet. What really matters for most compute problems is performance per watt uh, today. And this is true in the data center just as much as it is in mobile devices. Some of you will be working in the mobile arena, some uh, in server or other applications. High performance and throughput per watt are critical to the data center. We have some customers who tell us they were unable to increase the size of their simulation grid because they literally ran out of power in their physical uh, location. They couldn't get enough electricity into the location. So power sensitive data centers are um, a, a challenge. 75% typically of operational costs of a data center are for energy. So putting the investment up front in the capital of the data center uh, to optimize for low power will pay back. And of course, moving our resources to the cloud is one solution. Moving it to the cloud can save up to 87% of IT energy for a typical enterprise. Uh, and we are engaged with many customers who are doing just that with their EDA environments, for example. So the technologies that underpin some of these power reductions, one example is 40G Ethernet. Uh, this port consumes only 1.7x the energy of 10 giga um, ether Ethernet, but has 4x of the performance. So with advances like this, we can stay ahead of the curve. And similarly, on the cellular side, the 5G cellular solutions are highly energy efficient compared to what's gone before. Now in Mentor, we uh, commission a survey um, every two years uh, through w Wilson Research. I have a few survey uh, results to share in the area um, of low power. Um, this one is pretty simple, showing the percentage of designs that are actively managing power. Uh, obviously, uh, if you're here in the room, then you're already interested in low power in your ASIC design. You're in the 71, 72% of ASIC designs um, that are power sensitive and have to consider power. Um, over the years, this number is growing. And what we see in particular is that the largest designs are approaching 80% um, of those designs which have to actively manage power. Power is becoming a normal requirement of, of the chip design flow. In terms of verification, um, in our survey we asked uh, respondents to break down the different kinds of power management features that they had to verify in their verification flow. And one area which was particularly interesting as an increase uh, from 2012 to 2018 was more focus on the software and firmware aspects of low power. Uh, we'll have Shantanu uh, later on today talking about the application of the emulator as part of a verification solution for low power because increasingly those large devices can't rely on simulation and static tools alone um, because we have to include uh, firmware and software in the mix. So finally, I look at the uh, industry standardization of uh, UPF and related technologies in the area of low power design and verification. A little bit of history, we can see that um, back in 2012, 2014, there was quite a shift from the older CPF flow to UPF 2.x. Uh, by 2014, a lot of the CPF users had transitioned. We saw a, a later transition in the last uh, two years, 2016 to 2018, where we see the early adopters of UPF 1.0, even 2.0, and also teams that were using their own proprietary solutions, not yet using UPF had shifted uh, to use UPF 3.0 um, in 2018. Uh, we see that UPF is finally starting to deliver on the promise of being a technology that can aid productivity and thoroughness of verification 
in the area of low power. And thoroughness of verification is what it's all about. Um, our survey shows that um, most ASICs still require one or two respins before going into production. One or two spins, sorry, before going into production. Uh, this is quite consistent over the survey years from 2012 to 2018. No particular trends other than the chips are getting more complex. Our problem space is growing, it's becoming more complex, and so we need to keep up with uh, techniques and technologies that can help us achieve that verification. If we look at the causes of uh, those respins, uh, the logic and functional bugs are always the, the most significant cause, but we can see that power and clocking concerns are quite significant. Um, and so uh, with the complexity of your designs with multiple clock domains, power islands, UPF, uh, voltage scaling, and all of those extra uh, layers of logic that are required to support that, we need a layer of verification, uh, rigor, and methodology, and tools uh, to help you with that.